Hey, we're going to be learning JavaScript today, and I am super excited about this because this is where you move from designer world to developer world. HTML, CSS, hey, that stuff's great. It's considered more, a little more design because it's outputting looks. And when you move JavaScript, now you're starting to move into functionality. And the good news is, is if you learn JavaScript, you're set up to learn a bunch of other languages because programming is programming is programming. They're all very, very similar. Um, so what we're going to do is go ahead and open up Google Chrome and hit View Developer JavaScript Console. Or if you're on the Mac, app, uh, Apple Alt-J or Command Alt-J. So I can hit Command Alt-J and toggle this thing open closed. Chrome, you can do JavaScript two ways. You can do it in your HTML code, like in your text editor. Or to learn it and to do a lot of things, you can do it straight in the browser. This is the easiest way to learn. So this is what we're going to do because basically... We're typing real time into JavaScript and it's going to real time give us what we're doing. So, for instance, I can go alert, open up a colon, and then go in quotes, hi there, close out the colon, and hit semicolon, or not colon, these are uh, whatever they're called, brackets, braces. Uh, so, there you go, alert, hi there, and look, we created an alert and it says, hi there. So, that's great, there you go, you're a programmer. Uh, I can also go alerts. You can do two commands on one line. As long as there's a semicolon there, it's going to know that you're done with a command and it's going to look for the next thing as a new command. So that's one of the important things with semicolons. Hi there. I say, okay. Hi again. See, programming is not that terrifying, people. It's it's not this actual other language. People call them languages, but the languages are in English. It's more or less just a list of commands. So another thing you can do is console. We're in the console right now, so I can do console.log. Hi there. Oh, and then it spits out, hi there. And so now I can go console.log, hi there, alert. Hi there. So now it's going to log hi there, and then it's immediately going to alert hi there. So there you go. So that's kind of your basics. I'm running commands, and I'm putting in the commands my, they're called arguments. Uh, I'm basically telling the command alert whatever I give you as an argument. So in this case, I'm telling it to alert a text string of hi there. Let's get into what is a text string. I just use that weird word. Don't, don't freak out on me. It just basically means remember that all these characters are a thing. So if I go hi there, it knows that hi there is a text string. Let me kind of tell you the difference between a text string and a non-text string, uh, or a string. So if I go to, if I go 20, it does not know that that's the number 20. It just knows that that's a string, i.e. it's a letter two and a letter zero. If I do 20 without quotes, well, okay, now it knows that that's a number. See, if you spit out, there's no quotes there. It knows that that's the number 20. Here, watch, let me show you something. If I do quotes and go 20 plus 1, it's a string. It's a 2, a 0, a space, a plus, a space, a 1. That's what a string type is. It's not smart, it just knows it's these characters. If I go 20 plus 1, well, now it's doing math for me because I'm using numbers. So that's kind of the difference between a string type and a number type. They're called types. Um, and that's that's a key word you want to remember as you move forward is there's probably five types in JavaScript. Uh, maybe there's six. There's there's basically just a few types, not an endless amount of types. String and number are things you'll have in any, any, any programming language. Um, and across most languages, these are going to be the same. So let's get into how we actually do programming. And then once we kind of get comfortable with the basics of programming, the next video I'll show you how to actually do some stuff on your web page with it. But first, we got to get a little bit more comfortable uh, with JavaScript as a language. So I'm going to clear this out. I'm going to introduce the concept of variables. A variable, it's just a lot easier to think of it as a container. Tell you what, I won't even explain it. I'll just show you how it works. It'll make sense. Var name. So I'm making a variable called name equals will. There we go. So now I basically said, hey, name equals will. So anytime I hit name, it goes, huh, will. So if I go alert name without quotes, I'm not giving it a string now. I'm giving it a variable, which is already defined. My name is Will. So if I hit alert, it says Will. Let's do that again. I'm going, let's go, let's call this one message equals hello there. So now I can go alert message. 
hello there. If I go alert message in quotes, then it says message because I gave it a string. I didn't give it a variable. I didn't give it a container we already defined. I gave this a brand new thing that I created as a string. Anytime I do quotes, I'm creating a new thing. I'm creating a new string, if that makes sense. What happens if you try to alert something you haven't defined yet? Alert um, new message, which we've not created. It says at new message is not defined. You haven't created something called new message yet. Well, let's make a variable called new message. Now I can do alert new message, and there you go, my new message. So hope that wasn't too redundant for you, but that's kind of how you're going to do things. I can also create a variable called my number, and I can make this one a number instead of... Um, so now if I do my number, it knows 200, and notice there's no quotes around it. It knows that it's a it knows that it's an integer or a number. So what I can do is ver my age equals 33. Shh, don't tell anyone. So then I can go my age plus 20. If I spelled my age correctly, up oh, it knows that in 20 years I'll be 53. So you can do math with variables. It as far as JavaScript is concerned, there is no difference between saying my age equals 20 and going 33 plus 20. It's like, well, let's just look up what my age is. Okay, my age is exactly the same as 33. So what variables do is they give you the ability to store information and pull it back up at a later time. This is very, very useful. It's basically the core of programming. You're saving information. You're looking it up at another time. So let's get into an if else statement if you're not in too far over your head if not just watch the video over again and it, it'll make sense pretty quickly for you we can do this let me define age equals 33 again not, I don't know why I did triple equals so age is 33 and I'm going to go if and then I'm going to do brackets again age is less than, remember from your math school, greater than less than symbols? Yep. So age is on the littler side of the arrow. So if age is less than 35, and then I'm going to do these guys. And then for this, you're going to have to hold shift and hit enter. Because if you hit enter, it's going to execute the command. So I hit shift and hit enter. I'm going to go, you're still young. And then I'm going to hit shift and enter again, and I'm going to close out that bracket. So let's look at what I did. I said, we're going to do a check here. If, and then whatever is in here equals true, then it's going to go execute whatever's between these braces, which in this case is just a single alert. So at this point, I go, if my age is younger than 35, alert that I'm still young. Let's hit enter and see what happens. Ah, still young. So now watch this. I'll go age... I don't have to hit ver because age has already been defined. Age equals 37 now. You only need to use ver the very first time you're... Oh yeah, for very first time. You only have to use ver the very first time you're defining a variable. So now if I run the same thing, if age is less than 35... Nope, doesn't alert that I'm still young. So what I can do now is I can go else holding shift and return again. So if age is less than 35, alert still young. Oh, oh man, getting old. So now it's going to check it out. If you're, if you're younger than 35, or if this number is less than 35, alert that you're young. Else, alert getting old. And well, this is called an if statement, and then it's an if else statement. Uh, and that's another core thing that you're going to use programming in any language. It's just for checking stuff out. Say you've downloaded the user from Twitter, and you want to see if they have tweets. If uh, if tweets, let me see. Uh, let me give you an example of what we do here. Tweet count equals zero. So then you can go, you know, you've loaded up your user. If tweet count is less than one you need to make some tweets 
And so it's going to alert that to the user, or it's going to spit out a message on the page. It's going to do something that's a lot prettier than this ugly generic alert. Um, and so that's kind of the, the concept of how you use JavaScript in programming. Uh, you can also say if there's more than five tweets, then you only show five. If you know, you can. This is basically where you get some of those programming basics in there. Um, let's do one more thing and then we'll move on to in the next video where we actually do some cool fun stuff on our page if you're not freaking out so far we we did a string type we did a number type we did if else let's do some arrays so arrays are the third type we're gonna learn in JavaScript clear that again my list an array is basically a list of things and a, an array is done with brackets so whenever you do brackets like that, it creates something of an array type. And what you do is you just give it a bunch of values. I'll just do a grocery list here. So eggs, and I'm doing each one in quotes. And you'll notice you can use single quotes or double quotes. It's kind of interchangeable with JavaScript. Eggs, milk, fruit. So now if I go my list, I've got a list of three items, eggs, milk, fruit. And so that's what an array is. An array stores a list of items for you. Usually if you were to download a friends list from, you know, Twitter or whatever, you would get an array of all of your friends. So that's kind of what arrays are for. They're kind of like a ULLI thing. You know, a UL is a list of items. And this is kind of the JavaScript equivalent of a UL. It's a list of things. Um, so you can go my list, zero, and that's going to get the first, the zero entry, which is eggs. Um, a lot of people that kind of is weird to them, index number zero, I thought that was the first item that should be one. Yeah, well, for whatever reason, programming languages usually use a, it's called a zero index. This is zero, this is one, this is two. So I can go my list zero equals, and I can change this to a different string. I can call it now veggies. So now if I go my list, You'll notice they work just like variables. It's basically just a group of variables, except for each one doesn't have a name. They have an index now. So I can go my list to one equals, I'll do one eggs. And I go my list. So now we go veggies, eggs, fruit. So you notice we're just kind of changing this thing. I can also go my list three, which there is no three, equals, I don't know, we'll add friends to the list hit my list. Now we have four things in here. And you can also at any point in time go my list.length and see, yep, we got four items in there. So we have four items, items 0, 1, 2, and 3, which is a little confusing to people, but now that you know it, you know it. Um, and that's pretty much how you'll use arrays. Um, and if you're, um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. We'll go ahead and end this video for now. In the next video, I want to get you into something that's usable, that's fun right away. So we're going to skip JavaScript knowledge 2.0, and we're just going to go straight into using jQuery to do fun stuff. Hope you enjoyed this lesson.